For Krima Media's Polity, I'm Sane Lamini, Senior Research Associate at the University of Johannesburg and spokesperson to the President of South Africa, Bongani Ngulunga, joins me to discuss his book titled The Man Who Founded the ANC, a biography of Pigs Liga Isaka Seme. Welcome, Mr. Ngulunga. Thank you for inviting me. Okay. For those who might not know the man we are talking about today, who is Pigs Liga Isaka Seme? Wow. I mean, that's an extraordinary question because he did so many things in his life. Mm. Uh, but he was born at Inanda Mission, just outside Devon. Mm. He had uh, 10 siblings, so it was a huge family. And at a young age, he went to the United States uh, to do high school. Mm. Actually, he was only 14 years old in 1898 when he sailed to, to the United States. Of course, I mean, he was lucky, mm. in a sense, because John Langalibalele Dube, his homeboy, was already in mm. the United States. Uh, studying uh, theology at New York. And so um, he founded the ANC. That's what he has become known for. Mm. That at just 30 years old, I mean, he founded the ANC, an extraordinary human being. When he died in 1951, they said he was the greatest uh, African in the first 50 years, if not the century as a whole. I mean, that just tells you how big the man was. Mm. There have been books written about the men already. What makes your book unique? Well, there were there are actually two books that have been written about him before my book. Mm. Uh, the first one was written uh, by Tim Cousin and Richard Reeve. I mean, it focused on his time as a high school student. It was just only that. I mean, he mm. found they found a few letters that he exchanged with some of his teachers as a student. So quite very thin. Mm. And then Mos Mashamaite, I think in 2011, wrote another book, which left a whole lot of stuff about Seme's life. I mean, so I decided to write what I hope is a comprehensive biograph of Pixley Seme. Mm. It reveals some information that has never been known about Pixley Seme. Mm. So I, I do think that it is the first book that is as comprehensive as you can imagine about mm. the man. <coughs> he also won a Curtis Medal for the speech that he delivered, that powerful speech that was at Columbia University in 1906, the regeneration of Africa. From what you have gathered while you were doing your research, why was this speech so powerful? No, I, I think in the first instance, we need to say that he gave the speech as part of a student debate competition. Yes, so yes. he was a student. Mm. I mean, at the time he was 24 years old in 1906, April 1906. It was an extraordinary speech. I mean, he was this young man who had been absent from the African continent for years, giving a speech, giving a vision about the regeneration of mm. Africa. And remember, there were debates in the United States at the time about the status of African-Americans in the United States. <coughs> and people had different visions of Africa, some saying it was backward. Mm. And he came with this positive vision about, African, about the African continent, as well as about the black race mm. generally. It made him famous. I mean, for the first time, here was this African, because people who were talking about Africa were people from outside the African yes. continent. And he was somebody from the mm. African continent giving not just only a defense of the African continent and black people in general, but also giving a positive view mm. about the contribution that Africa and the Africans had made to human civilization. It was just amazing. Mm. The New York Times the following yes. day wrote this glowing report about his speech mm. as well as from the East Coast to the West Coast of the United States and across the world. Everybody was talking about this young man mm. who had given this amazing speech. And it still inspires generations of uh, African nationalists mm. in the African diaspora even today, 100 years after the speech was given. Mm. Upon his return to the country in 1910, he also became involved in politics, which led him to call all African leaders, black leaders, to unite and form what was called at the time the South African Native Congress or Native Union. Yeah. Tell us what was the reasoning behind this formation, which also led to the formation of the African National Congress. Remember, Seme comes back to South Africa in October 1910. Mm. He had been absent for 12 years. Mm. I mean, as I've said, he had gone to high school in Massachusetts. From there, he went to Columbia University to do his junior degree. From there, he went to Oxford. Mm 
to do a law degree, which he didn't complete. Mm. But then he comes back to South Africa. Um, what had happened is that in May 1910, the Union of South Africa had been established. That, in a sense, united the four colonies or the republics, I mean, Transvaal, Orange Free State, Cape, and Natal, into one union. Mm. But black people had been excluded. And so there is this national consciousness amongst black people that we have been excluded, we need to unite. But what was significant about Seme's achievement is that while other political leaders had failed to unite black people, he succeeded where they had failed. I mean, barely a year after he had returned, he's at the forefront of galvanizing everybody to form this one organization that will unite all black people. Mm. I mean, if you check, he arrives in October 1910. By June 1911, he's at the forefront of the formation of this organization. And in October 1911, I mean, he issues a clarion call. He says, let us form this native union. We are one people. What has divided us before, we must put it aside. Mm. We need this organization that will represent all of us. Mm. And in, 19, oh, in, in 1912, 8 January 1912, the formation of the ANC uh, comes into being and Pixley Sagasem is giving the inaugural address mm. and he gets elected the first treasurer general of the ANC. Mm. With his homeboy, John Langalibalele Dube, as the president general of the ANC. Amazing, amazing mm. achievement. Mm. In just one year, he succeeds where most people had failed. Mm. And yeah. I know he was the first person to deliver the well-known now, the January 8th statement that the yes. MC still continues. Yes, because, mm. I mean, in a sense, that was in recognition of the effort he had made mm. in the formation of the ANC. Of course, it was not called the ANC at the time. Yes. It was called uh, the South African Native National um, Congress, I mean the SANNC, which was renamed in 1923 to, the, to be the African National Congress that we know it to be today. So based on the research again that you've done, what were his beliefs and do you think that the current political leaders in the ruling party can learn anything from his? Yes, first in the first instance, he believed in national unity, mm. especially that black people had to set aside they are narrow interests and agendas and unite everybody. Mm. That was Seme's vision. But he also did many things. I mean, he formed a national newspaper for the first time in 1912. He also in 1912, he formed a company, the Native Farmers Association. He was the second black person to be admitted as a lawyer in South Africa after another guy from Natal called Alfred Mangana. So Seme did many things. I mean, he achieved many things that mm. I think most people in their lifetimes will never achieve. He did it in one year. Mm. And so I think perhaps more than anything, his main message and belief was in the unity of black people as a whole. Mm. And I think that um, the current leaders, not only of the ANC, but I think the leaders generally in our society can learn a lot mm. from that message and his, and his mission. Mm. When he became president general of the ANC in the 1930s, he brought it to its knees through sheer ineptitude and an authoritarian style of leadership. Can you also tell us what happened? Because we know that he was voted out as the ANC during a Congress that was in December 1937. What was the reason behind that? You know, <coughs> it's, it's an amazing thing that mm. here was this human being who as a 30 year old, had started the ANC. Mm. He left the ANC, disappeared, I mean, immediately after establishing it. And then he comes back towards the end of the 1920s and he wanted to be the president of the ANC because there was political conflict in the ANC. Mm. And so he got re-elected in 1930. But then his presidency was the most controversial, perhaps, in the history of the ANC mm. because Seme believed in his own abilities and perhaps at the expense of uh, an accommodating leadership style. Mm. Mm. And so by 1937, the ANC was literally dead. Mm. He was authoritarian, he was a dictator, he didn't accommodate other people's views. Mm. He was the 
only ANC president at least so far <laughs> who, when he got defeated, delegates uh, stood up and sang Kosisigeli Africa. They were relieved, I mean, that uh, he had been uh, defeated. And of course, I mean, I was telling somebody that he did something unprecedented. After the election results had been announced, he stood up and said uh, he was withdrawing from the contest yes, when he had ever. been defeated. <laughs> And of course, delegates said, but how can you, after the results have been announced, how can you withdraw? I mean, but he, he was not a good leader. Um, I think part of the reason why he, his presidency of the ANC was so difficult is because the 1930s were a very difficult period for him personally. Mm. He had been struck off the role of Atenis yes. in 1932, in September 1932. Mm. He was in great financial difficulty. So much so that he lost literally everything that he had. Mm. He had to depend on other people to support his family. Mm. And so you could say perhaps um, that he focused more on dealing with his personal life at the expense mm -hmm. of yes. leading the ANC. And as a result, the ANC got into serious trouble. Mm. Can you also tell us, because there was this shocking revelation, at least from my side, that his tombstone was erected by the in Qatar Freedom Party. Yes, that is that is true. Mm. His, his tombstone was uh, uh, erected by what was called in Qatar Yonkululego at yes. the time. Um, I think there are two reasons for that. I mean, the first is that he was a relative of the leader of the what is called the Inkata Freedom Party today, mm. Prince Mangosu Tubtelis. Oh. Seme's wife, second wife, uh, was Princess Pikisile Katinuzulu. Mm who was a half-sister of uh, Buteleris' mother, Princess Makoko. Mm -hmm. They were sisters. Mm -hmm. And so at some point when Seme in the 19, late 1930s, early 1940s, when he lived in Nongom, Buteleris was also there. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, in a sense, uh, it was a family relationship that made that possible. Mm -hmm. But there is another reason. When Seme died, he was not highly regarded in the ANC. I think in a sense the ANC distanced itself from from him. Mm. He was not really spoken about as one of the great leaders. Mm. And so I think the the IFP saw that as an opportunity to claim him. And remember the, the IFP erected his uh, tombstone in the 1980s mm. when there was a conflict yes. between the UDF and the IFP at the time. Mm. And so Telezi was claiming mm a legacy of the ANC as mm -hmm. part, I mean, he, he would make an argument that the IFP was the continuation of the ANC of Pixley Seme, of John Dube, of mm -hmm. Lutuli. And so by erecting the tombstone, in a sense, he was laying a marker mm -hmm. that this is my legacy. Mm -hmm. uh, we are continuing what Seme had started. Mm -hmm. He was also a very important figure, as we, we have mentioned his history. How do you think South Africa could better remember him now? Wow. I think, as I have said, perhaps more than anything, Seme, I mean, it's surprising in a sense that we, he, he had become a forgotten figure, mm. given what he, he achieved. I mean, just if you think about the organization that he formed as a 30-year-old, the African National Congress, that it has lived for more than 100 years, mm -hmm. just that alone, yes. I think, should make us to respect him for the achievement. Mm -hmm. But he was more than a political leader. He was a leader of society. I've mentioned some of his achievements. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, being the second black person to be admitted as a lawyer. Mm -hmm. So really, he was a, a pioneer even in the legal profession. Mm -hmm but he was also a businessman. He formed many companies. I mean, there is a place uh, in Pumalanga called Dachakral. He bought farms there from white people to cycle black people. And the generations of black people who bought the land there through him are still there. That on its own, I think, is an extraordinary achievement. I think for all his flaws, he should be remembered really as one of the greatest leaders that we have ever had as mm -hmm. Africans. Mm -hmm. And I think the unity that you see amongst black people in particular in South Africa mm -hmm. is one of his greatest legacies. Mm -hmm. Have you received any response uh, or criticism from people who have read the book? Mostly it's been positive mm -hmm. 
responses. I mean, people have been surprised uh, by the amount of research that went into uh, into this book mm. and how well written the book is. I'm, I'm glad about that. Mm. But look, I mean, I'm sure there will be one or two mistakes. I do not know. Mm. I will expect criticisms. Mm. Of course, the, the, the reason why I wrote the book was for us to discuss yes. this uh, historical figure and perhaps to bring him back to public imagination mm. and, and to think about the progress that we have made as, as South Africans. I mean, just imagine, in January 1912, South Africa was a completely different country from what it is today. Mm -hmm. And it is through the efforts of people like Pixley, Kai Sakasayami, mm -hmm. that we are where we are today. Mm -hmm. So um, the responses have been largely positive. Mm -hmm. I'm beginning to receive responses from historians, academics, wow. and they've been very positive. I mean, I got actually an email from an academic in the United States mm -hmm. who has read the book. So I'm quite glad, I mean, about the positive responses I've received. Mm. Thank you for your time, Mr. Ngolonga. Thank you, thank you very much. That was Bongani Ngolonga speaking to Krima Media's Polity about his book titled, The Man Who Founded the ANC, a biography of Pixley Ka Isaka Sen.